Hello, and welcome back to Conscious Construction, the Conscious Enneagram podcast. I am Abby Robbins, and I'm here today with... Kimberly Culbertson. As usual. I don't know why I keep saying it like it's going to be somebody different. But... <laughs> You're stuck with me now. <laughs> yeah, basically. No, it's good. Um, <laughs> today, we're not going to talk about a type today. Today, we are talking about conflict resolution styles. This is quickly becoming my favorite part of Enneagram conversations. And partially it's because we do a lot of Mm -hmm, mm team-oriented coaching. And so I think a lot of Enneagram for beginners is focused on typology. Yeah. So it's very, let me understand myself and Mm -hmm, get language for mm -hmm. other people to understand me. Mm -hmm. And then for a lot of people, that is where it ends. Yeah. They're like, go me, or I hate it, depending on which type you are. Yeah. But I think the real magic of the Enneagram comes when we start having more understanding and compassion Mm -hmm. around how we are relating to each other. Yeah. And so we get that a little bit with the centers. We get it a little bit more with the stances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you get into conflict resolution styles... It's like, this is the core piece. Oh, dude. Yeah, Yeah. it's so helpful because we are so reactive in conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And having just a little bit of understanding about the people that we are in conflict with, generally, not always, but most people who are in conflict want to get back to good. Yeah. You yeah. know, they love each other. They care about each other. They enjoy each other or even they are stuck just, with each other. Yeah. Work. Even if it's just something that's much less, you know, intimate or, or quote unquote meaningful, like we're, we, we engage in conflict all the time. And so understanding that the way you specifically engage in conflict is not necessarily the same way that everyone engages in conflict right. and what you're trying to get out of it is different. Like yeah. when it's like when you think it's over, someone else doesn't think it's over. Um, and I think that's right. why conflict resolution styles are so powerful to like understand and work with. Yeah. And even in those rare situations where you really don't care if that person gets back to good with you, it helps you actually get mm-hmm. meaningful change mm-hmm. because usually if you're in conflict and you don't care about the people, it's because you're looking for change. Yeah. You're calling out a need for something to change. And in order to do that understanding how people change, mm-hmm. like com- conflict is involved regardless. And yeah. so yeah. let's jump in. Just like everything Enneagram, there's nine types and there's three triads. Yeah. And there's three groups of three. So many groups of three. So <laughs> this is one of them that people get so bogged down in describing the nine types that they never really get to this unless mm-hmm. they're unless you're in like a deep dive program yeah um, so let's talk about it so the three different conflict resolution styles are as follows <laughs> emotional realness competency and positive outlook Yes. And I describe them in that order because what we'll get into as we talk about it, I guess we'll just get into it now <laughs> um, is that like these are essentially the things that that each person each type, is looking for as a signal that the conflict is over and we're back to good, right, as right. you put it. Um, it is resolved, the conflict yeah. resolution. <laughs> yes, so like, okay, I've resolved, the, I've yes. gotten to here, I've resolved the conflict. Right. The problem comes when we realize that there are different people with different needs for the conflict to be resolved. They have different styles of resolving this conflict. Right. Um, and, and then beyond that, that... In order for any of us to really, truly resolve any conflict, we actually need access to all three of these things. Exactly. And that's kind of the key here is that it's not just that yours is different, but it's actually that you need yours and the other person's and something else, right? Right. Like you you always need all three in order to to truly move forward and, and have it be transformational. Which, Um, by the way, is true for everything Enneagram. We have far too much made this a personal tool for my own personal typology. Just give me my t-shirt and my mug, and I'll be like, here's why a seven is great, which is especially true for sevens. But (laughs) then then if we end it there, we're not really doing the Enneagram. The Enneagram is about how we relate. Yeah, relate one-to-one, relate in community. Yes. Um, Without all of those things in play, you're not doing the work. Right. I mean, I wrote a whole book about that, so. They did. You should read it. Consciousenneagram.com. Go get, go get yourself a copy. It's very good. For real, though. <laughs> for real, for real. You know what I hate is when my friends write bad books, 
Because then you have to be like, I'm, you know, positive outlook. So I'm like, well, it's a good effort. How many friends do you have that have written bad books? Um, I cannot disclose that information. <laughs> But I used to be an editor in a oh, literary right. yeah. so I mean, a number. Okay. Um, All right. So I can just honestly tell you, buy the book. It's very good, <laughs> which was, you know, a, a relief for me. Yeah, right? <laughs> so conflict resolution. Conflict style. resolution. Let's, let's dive in. So the first one that we're going to talk about is emotional realness. Um, yes. This is where I sit as an eight. Emotional realness is fours, sixes, and eights. Um, and you can kind of see how those types, like what those types have in common. It has a lot to do with this conflict resolution style. Sure. Um, there is um, the emotional realness is essentially saying when in a conflict, the goal of the conflict or like the conflict is over when the emotionality uh, has been acknowledged. Essentially, like both parties can like, feel into and be with what the other person felt, which is pretty much almost always something bad. <laughs> well, if you're in conflict. Yeah, if you're, you're in conflict. You're not usually in conflict about like, no, my trip was better. I yeah, enjoyed it more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we start, we start conflict, we start healing conflict from a, an objectively negative place, mm-hmm. right? We mm-hmm. have to, like these types are telling us, you know, the eight would say something along the lines of like, I'm angry and you're going to hear about it, right? It's kind of the phrase that, that people mm-hmm. will use for eights. But it's really this piece of like, there is some deep emotional hurt, right? Like there is some rupture to our relationship, right? And our heart center is where all relationality lives. Right. There's some issue here and we need to get to the bottom of it. We need to really see and feel what's happening here Mm -hmm. and fours sixes and eights are are doing that in their own particular ways but they're all pretty in tune with that um this style of conflict resolution is often very intense Mm -hmm. um which you know and yeah it is (laughs) well yeah it's almost always intense but it's also seen in our culture as very um man it's downplayed as like being overly emotional. It is, um, yeah. It is. Especially uh, in corporate spaces. Yeah. To access it at all can be, you can it can be problematic for the yeah. person that is trying to be honest about well, that emotional space. Even um, even in Enneagram spaces. Yeah. I mean, we were, oh, yeah. I mean, you and I were in a training where <laughs> like literally my experience of a conflict that was playing out in real time in this training was, completely and thoroughly dismissed by the other people in the training um i still have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about that (laughs) one if i'm being honest we we had a break and i i knew as it was happening because we're pretty in tune um and so i went to see how they were doing and they were just walking up and down the stairs yeah um (laughs) because the the body center and trying to trying to move out the anger and, and be able to return to um actually another panel that yeah, another that they session. are going to be on yeah. um and so yeah it was it was yeah. it was a bit dismissed yeah and um, so it's often dismissed and i think that it's one reason why it's really important to talk about that like this is like without this piece in resolving conflict um you're not actually healing the relationship it's like you haven't fully acknowledged what you're trying to solve. Yeah. You're trying the, to short circuit it, solve it without acknowledging it. Exactly. And I think mm-hmm. what happens, I'm going to give kind of a, I'll give, I'm from the body triad. I'll give a very visceral analogy. Do it. Let's um, go. But I was leading a bicycle ride and uh, we were out on like some gravel roads and a woman crashed mm-hmm. and got a big old gash in her arm. Um, she went to the ER and I, I was fully anticipating that they were going to, like, stitch her up because, like, you could see the bone. It was <laughs> gnarly. Okay. Um, everybody's like, oh, squeamish. But <laughs> and the eight's like, oh, this thing happened. Um, <laughs> but she came back. Uh, she came back to, like, the, the group. And she was like, well, they wrapped it up. But they didn't stitch it up because they wanted to make sure it wasn't infected first. Okay. Because if, 
you were yeah. to take something that had gotten that dirty, like if you think about like falling on a gravel road, the dust, the dirt, whatever. Oh, yeah. If you had yeah, taken yeah. something that was that dirty and had just stitched up, there could be an infection underneath. Oh my gosh, what a which great would metaphor. Then, which would then come back and really bite you in the ass and you would have to have some sort of like surgical procedure in order to like come back, reopen the wound, clean it out you know, in hopes that it hadn't like gotten to the blood at that point, you know, so this is a wild and very intense. No, it's a very good metaphor. Yeah. A little intense, but yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you expect? Um, but yeah, so it's like yeah. without really truly acknowledging the pain and the hurt that both parties have experienced, you can't move forward to repair the right. relationship. And I do think it's worth noting that in the emotional reality triad realness triad there's people from all three centers and people mm -hmm. from all three stances yeah so of those three they they like run the gamut of those in the different triangles mm -hmm. um so what an eight emotional realness might look different yes than of course a six because yeah. you're going to get more of the fear like i was very afraid mm -hmm. for the six mm -hmm. um this caused me a lot of anxiety we need to acknowledge what yeah. what my my feelings of anxiety were and with the four you're going to get more sadness and shame mm -hmm. grief um, grief but what what is being felt deserves to be acknowledged yeah now the danger is if you only have emotional realness in the room then you might express and acknowledge and hug and not solve which brings us to the next <laughs> right. most important piece which is the competency triad i'm not gonna say most important well okay so the next another the important next piece. important piece how about that <laughs> yes yes so my my wife and i i'm married to a four uh, many of you know this, um, and we are both emotional realness. Right, right. And so, so intense. <laughs> we are. Kim, Kim gets I, an earful quite often. <laughs> I, I love, I love it for you guys. I am never bored. Yeah, never, 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 and, ever. You know, neither are our children. Like, <laughs> but we have. They know, are not all emotional realness, no. though. So, <laughs> one of them maybe, but not all, not all of us. But there's a, you know, there is a lot of the like feeling and acknowledging and and that is where we sit a lot of times and even though we're both coming from the same place it can still be hard because the way that we approach it is so different right mm -hmm. like she's more in her sadness and grief and she can definitely lean into anxiety a little bit more where i'm in anger like everything's getting filtered through anger so it's taken a lot of work for us to move into like the solutions piece, which is where the competency comes in, right? So ones, right. threes, and fives are our competency triad. And essentially these are the people who are like, there is a problem, we're going to fix it, right? So they, they approach conflict like a math problem, right? right? Like problem, I like using the word problem because it mm -hmm. uses both. Like there's an emotional conflict with fours, sixes, and eights. And there, there's essentially a math problem in for ones, threes, and fives, right? They're coming in and they're, they're, it, it can We just need to work the puzzle until we exactly. get the right picture. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to work the puzzle. That's a good one. But it's, mm -hmm. you know, where four, six, and, excuse me, four, sixes, and eights can be seen um, as too intense, um, too emotional, too hysterical, right? Especially if they're women. Um, ones, threes, and fives, uh, it can be really branded as very cold and right. very distant. So, sometimes robotic, although less yeah. the three, but less the than ones three, and fives. The way they approach problems is still yeah. very robotic. And it's calculated. Very calculated. Yeah. That's a good word for it because mm -hmm. it does feel, um, it is very devoid of emotion. If you think about ones, threes, and fives, um, none of them are particularly good at And emotion. the threes, we haven't gotten into that yet, but the threes are in that emotion heart center but, but they don't have access they're to like it for themselves emotionally repressed yeah, yeah. so yeah. they so all of them aren't really leading from that they don't even necessarily have the emotional realness mm -hmm. they, they they literally don't access it easily yeah. mm -hmm. so they're coming to these you know relational conflicts like uh like a puzzle like mm -hmm. a math problem um and that's not necessarily bad right so what happens is they they can they are the ones who are best at seeing the right way forward, mm -hmm. right? So this has happened. Here's how we prevent it from happening again. Here's how we change behavior, right? This is right. something that like we're working with our young children about. Like how do we 
not just say sorry yeah. and how do we adjust behavior ones threes and fives are incredible at that they can see it they're ready and willing to execute it they are they are the masters at this but if that's the only way you're approaching a conflict and that that's mm -hmm. that's your only signal to say that oh we're done you're missing out on this acknowledgement of hurt and an acknowledgement of harm right you can really sidestep your responsibility in it which can be hard um and it, it doesn't give us any sense of meaning there's no way to really um see clearly why this conflict matters or why we're putting the energy towards these things right and i think especially for people in the emotional realness triad it can feel like you don't really care about me. You just want to get this over with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. be because they're immediately solution focused, yeah. they maybe won't stop and, and really sit in and acknowledge yeah. the emotions, largely because they're not super comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. And so they they don't want to sit in the mire. They want to move forward with the mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes if you go right to that, what ends up happening is it makes you feel dismissed. The person that you're yeah. in conflict with feels dismissed. Yeah. And then it's just a, a an increase of the mm -hmm. same conflict. Right. Yeah. I think it's really important to have competency, competency people in the yeah. mix when you are fixing systematic problems mm -hmm. and injustices. Because a lot of times what you have when you don't have that is people trying to give a lot of hugs but not fix the broken system. Yeah, um, yeah. But some of our conflict is not a systematic conflict. It's mm -hmm. an accidental misstep. Yeah. And they don't need systematic mm -hmm. solutions. They just need yeah. emotional acknowledgement. I think, there is, I think there is a point where, like, there's always something to change mm -hmm. about it. Like, there is a solution to it. Um, so, like... Competency is always relevant in conflicts, even when they're small, but it's like, it's not, oh, well, we're going to build this system and this is going to be our safeguard. It's more like, I am going to choose to be more mindful in right. the future, right? Yeah. Like that is the solution right. over, like, I'm going, I'm going to take to heart your emotional experience and I'm going to allow that to change me so that I'm more mindful in the future. And that is the way forward. Um, so I think that that's really yep. like all three pieces are necessary in every conflict. Sure. Um, which leads us to positive outlook. Yes, baby. <laughs> uh, positive outlook is two sevens and nines. Uh-huh. Tell us a little bit about positive outlook. So people in the positive outlook triad are looking to, they don't really feel like the conflict is resolved until we found some positive silver lining mm -hmm. or meaning mm -hmm. or feeling. This is what it taught us. This is what's going to come out of it. That's great. Yeah. You know, um, it is, I've learned very annoying to people <laughs> when you do it too fast. Yes. So sevens are kind of like the king of the silver lining. Yeah. Um, and so we love to reframe things into a positive, um, twos and threes or twos and nines. Um, nines do it a little bit differently. You know, nines are kind of making it something that's not okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, twos are like, here's how I'm going to help yeah. a little bit. Um, like this is, this is, uh, how our connection can get better through mm -hmm. this, you know, but they're looking, we're looking for what's the positivity that comes out of conflict. And I think partially because of my type, mm -hmm. a lot of the work that we do is coming into corporate spaces and saying conflict can be generative and good. Yeah. We're so conflict avoidant in our culture that we miss the wisdom that comes out of conflict. Mm -hmm. And if you can reframe conflict instead of like it's this big, bad yeah. monster in the room, and instead, as this is a tool for wisdom, we can lean into conflict and figure out what's the good that's going to come out of this. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have that, you can lose engagement after conflict. Mm -hmm. You can lose, um, like you've, you've kind of fixed it but everybody feels bad and yeah. that, that, tri that trip to getting back to feeling good mm -hmm. can be really slow. So like, yes, it's fixed, but everything's still very raw. Yeah. If you've had a conflict where like it's, it's better, but it's not really better. Mm -hmm. Um, you might be missing that element yeah. of that positive outlook. You know, to take my like very intense metaphor, <laughs> it, it just hang with me. It's going to work and y'all are going to be impressed. Uh, <laughs> I'm ready. Like emotional realness is like, the antiseptic right in the wound it's the alcohol the it's cleaning the, it's, it's like the cleaning, cleaning it out of the wound the the 
competency is like the stitches. And the right? setting let's of the bone. Let or, it, yeah. The setting of the bone. Let's put it back together. And then the the positive outlook is like the solve that you put on top of it, like to make it hurt less. Right? Because there's some there's this piece of why did we go through all of that? Right. Like what's the point? Because truly, I mean, I'm an eight, so like take this with a grain of salt, but like <laughs> <laughs> life is conflict we're constantly in conflict and so what is the point of showing up if we're just going to have another conflict maybe it's not this exact issue but it's going to be something else right and so so why why would we do this because if we're just acknowledging each other's emotional experiences and then changing our behavior that's a massive amount of energy all the time but for right. what reason and i think that the positive outlook types, sevens, twos, nines, they do a really, really incredible job of helping us make meaning out of this conflict, right? They're, they're seeing the value in the hard work we just had to go through right. in order to, to make something better, right? And truly, we don't, like, <laughs> yeah, we know that we want to stitch up this wound and make sure it's not infected, but like, damn, it really hurts. We need something to help with the pain of that rawness, right. of that you know difficulty, um, in and order also, to make it worth it. We need to remember why we, you know, for example, want to keep the arm. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, might, I might break down a little bit the metaphor, but it's okay. But like, I think in conflict, people have a tendency to want to throw out, yeah, the whole, absolutely, the whole relationship sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, Like, I just hate that person. I never want to work with them again or whatever the case may be. Um, But there are things that are good that you forgot about while you're in conflict. Yeah. (laughs) And I think think you need sometimes the person who's still tethered to what is good to remind Mm -hmm. people, Mm -hmm. okay, that conflict was hard. We found a solution. Mm -hmm. Now we can get back to what we love about working together or doing Mm -hmm. life together, whatever the case may be. we need someone that can help us bring like let's mm-hmm. let's find something good to do together. Yeah. So it's not always a reframing of the conflict. It's also moving back into good. Yeah. And even I think what I've experienced is like it's not just moving back to what is good, but it's like a moving into what is better because we moved through this conflict. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like conflict is often a sign that something wasn't right to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is a, it, it's a, it's a transformative experience that allows us to move into something better. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see probably as you look through these three things that you need all three yeah. in play in order to truly move forward mm-hmm. from any conflict. And when we skip one of the sides of that, triad mm-hmm. or two it, of the sides or two of the sides <laughs> we we do it to our detriment yeah so even when we are in relationship with people whose conflict resolution style is vastly different than ours mm-hmm. we want to know that so that we can do that translation across yeah. those um, differences but yeah. we also should you know and let me just silver line this to you but like you should appreciate yeah that, that you have access yeah. to something that you don't as easily access mm-hmm. Because you're in relationship with someone who sees that w- the world differently and yeah. sees conflict differently than you. And you'll both be better for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. there you have it. The conflict resolution styles. <sighs> this is good stuff. And there's so much more to talk about. I'm sure we'll do a deeper dive as well. Um, but sure. thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed anything or learned anything from this episode, be sure to click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so that you're always... Uh, up to date when we're putting out new episodes and uh, drop us a comment and let us know um, about your conflict resolution style and how that's showed up for you and your relationships at work that sort of stuff and if you're catching this video as a one-off we are doing a series on each type Mm -hmm. where we are talking about center stances and the conflict resolution style so if you want to deep dive into one of the types um, you'll be able to do that if you check out the individual yeah. podcast yeah awesome um again thank you all so much for watching and you can find all my stuff at conscious as well as by the book uh schedule a typing interview or coaching session and you can find kimberly at kimberly all the links are in the description below and we will see y'all in the next one cheers